Hello and thanks for your company. Today on Encore, his works are an embodiment of the term people of colour. Self-taught Nigerian artist Eniwaye Oluwashe joins us to talk about his exciting solo exhibition, his first in Europe. <laughs> Anyway, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. Now, the eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fit of hearing. It's your first solo exhibition in Europe, yeah. on here in Paris. Tell us about the themes of the show and what you want to communicate with the work. Um, the, the body of work, you know, it unveils um, new characters and through representation. And I'm using um, families and friends. You know, the narratives are drawn from um, personal observations. And it aims to bring the viewers to an existential questioning, you know, in, in matters such as um, the structural um, social inequalities, um, refaction of primary resources and, you know, power dynamics. And it's just gearing me towards, you know, to translate um, social equity. And this is your first exhibition um, in Europe, your first solo exhibition. It's your first time in Paris. Oh, yes. It's your first day in <laughs> Paris today. Yes, um, it is. What do you make of it so far? Yeah. It's cold. It's cold. <laughs> it's cold. But it's, it's been great so far. Great atmosphere. I want to um, pick out some pieces that you've chosen for us to talk about. Um, one of them is um, Balloon Fight. Yes. Um, talk to us about that piece. Um, the Balloon Flight, you know, I intended to explore um, spiritual connections that transcend nationality and territories. And you can see it's, it's, it's um, been reinforced in one of these paintings. Uh, you know, I'm trying to, you know, um, reject any form of prophetical um, connotations and using them to um, impact a sense of um, spiritual movement, you know, and to say this, we can, through this, we can have um, some sense of um, semi-functioning realities. Another interesting one is called When Water Stops Quenching. Yes. Tell us about that, that's on in the uh, show. It's a dialogue between moral and sociopolitical behaviors. Um, it's quite political in a sense, and it's just um, a form of um, saying and gearing towards um, social equity. Um, now, can you talk to us a bit about your creative process? Because um, you use very vibrant colours in your works. Talk to us about that. Um, colour is, uh, I see colour as a means of communication. And uh, my process involves, you know, bringing together um, different experiences, you know, bringing together different references, working with people's experiences and, you know, bringing them together, using colors to communicate um, all these experiences in, the, in an embodiment of painting. Now, it looks like you've been painting for a very long time. Um, you were born and raised and, ba and you're based in Kwara State in Nigeria. Yes. You always yeah. wanted to become an artist, but somehow you found yourself at university studying um, engineering. Um, you began pursuing art again, though, back in 2019. Tell us, how did you find your way back to it? Um, I've always wanted to be an artist. And, um, you know, with the love I had for art, I, after, right after my degree, I felt um, it's time, you know, to give this art thing a trial. I've always wanted to be an artist. I've always been drawing, you know, from sketchbooks, color pencils, and um, reading books on color theories, watching YouTubes, they helped me a lot. And, you know, I started getting right into art. And did you always know that you had a talent? Oh, yes, I do. Of, of course, I do. <laughs> right since I was young, I knew I wanted to be an artist. And tell us, you were telling me just before the show started, um, you used to do competitions with your brother. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, we make drawings in the sketchbooks. We take it to my mom and tell her to judge who had, who, who had the best drawing. And, you know, classic mom. She's going to say, oh, the two are great. But I knew deep in, down in me that I had the best drawing. She wasn't, like, winking at you, secretly oh, no. going, oh, no, it's definitely no, you, won't. it's definitely <laughs> you. Um, your work examines some of the social, racial and um, political turmoil across Africa in recent years. Um, you shined a light on the NSARS movement, the marginalised albino community in sub-Saharan um, Africa, and the pressures of living in modern African society. Do you see yourself solely as an artist, or do you see yourself um, as a critic and observer as well? Ah, yes, yes. I personally, I'm, I'm, I'm a critic and an observer, and um, 
most of my works are more like uh, social commentaries, uh, you know, bringing into light some, some difficult issues. And, you know, sometimes we need to own up to these issues in order for us to move forward. And that's why in the um, Albino series, uh, they are more of my social commentary into um, a community that has been ostracized and sometimes killed for sh out of sheer evil. So, yes, they are more of social commentaries. And it is um, a big moment for African art. How would you describe the evolution of the art scene in Nigeria and even in Africa in recent years? Oh, I would say African art has always been around. And it's, it's quite... Um, good to see people are really turning their gaze on it now but it has always been around and for now having um arts from africa on the global stage it's it's a great thing but i want to talk um, about another exciting exhibition that's taking place in paris showcasing for the first time in france um, the work of internationally renowned south african photographer and activist zanelli maholi lisa kaminov reports Photographs of same-sex couples in intimate embraces. The exhibition opens with what Zaneli Moholi calls their love room. These photographs are among their favorites. This is my love story, really. This was taken 10 years ago here in Paris. And I'm with Valérie, a French thinker, a doctor. And I think that if we speak of freedoms, we should be familiar with images like this one, where we tell our same gender love without fear of being violated, without fear of being persecuted, without fear of being excluded. Bringing the LGBTQ plus community out of the dark, despite still being subject to violence in South Africa. In 1996, South Africa was the first country in the world to adopt a constitution that prohibits discrimination based on sexual orientation. Born during apartheid in 1972, Zanelli Moholi has been documenting the lives of queer and trans people for over 20 years. This project is Zanelli Moholi's life's work. These portraits of people from the LGBTQ community in Africa are a visual archive for the future. The idea of this series is to inscribe these individuals in memory, to give them a place in history, because today these people are very absent in visual culture and memory. The non-binary visual activist also captures self-portraits on camera to challenge representations of black women. Exoticism, savagery or magic, Zanelli Moholi portrays the black woman cliches in her photographs. I wish that we were to take like ownership of our own bodies, photograph ourselves in a manner that is just, in a manner that is um, respectable. The artist has transformed into a queen, a muse of classical painting or a statue of liberty. The beauty and power of the photographs entrance the viewer. There is a real strength in her vision and her fight. This work challenges me because each image asks me to put myself in their place. Zanelli Moholi's ultimate goal? To encourage a different viewpoint for a more tolerant and inclusive world. I'm here in the studio with um, Nigerian artist Eniwaye Olawashe. Now, do you know um, this artist's works, this photographer's work? Yes, I do. And homosexuality is generally viewed as unacceptable in Nigeria and in much of Africa. How is work like this received? Um, um, it's, it's, it's more well received in, 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 the, um, in Europe, um, Americas, but I've actually not come across such works in, in Nigeria. It's quite rare. Uh, you know, the, 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 the topic is quite sensitive right now. So. You know, you have to tread carefully when you, when, when you make works about things like this. Yeah, well, it definitely starts a conversation. Yeah, it does. Um, doesn't it? Um, we're out of time nearly, anyway, eh? but to close, what are your plans for the future? Wow. <laughs> to continue making art and, and, you know, make works that speaks to the people, even to myself as an artist, and, you know, continue being an artist. Okay, well, we're going to be following um, your journey. We always end our shows with our guests' cultural pick of the moment, what have you chosen for us? Oh, that's an exhibition by Lynette Yadon Boakye at the Tate. Okay, and why have you chosen it? Um, Lynette's work is amazing. It's, it's, uh, there are works I, I can resonate with, 
you know, she creates um, most of our images from memory, and they come in these dark and gloomy um, colors. And that's, that's something that resonates well with me, and it's amazing to see her work at, at the Tate. Okay, well, we're going to play out with her work. Thank you so much for joining us. The eye um, never has enough of seeing, nor the ear its fit of hearing is on at Paris's um, Zidoun Bosoit Gallery until the 25th of March. We'll leave you with that. Thanks for watching. See you next time.